Hello, Governor Mifflin and art students. I am very excited to talk to you about a project that I would invite you to do for the Amos Slemon Burkhart Foundation for a show coming up this summer at the Goggle Works. So let me tell you all about it. Okay, so I'm sure Mrs. Ellen has given you a little bit of a heads up, but this is the Governor Mifflin Art AP Art at the Goggle Works exhibition that will be this summer from June 4th to July 30th, 2021. And um, first of all, in case, uh, hopefully you've gotten to see the little short bio video that we did, but the Amos Lemon Burkhart Foundation, our mission is to sustain and promote the legacy of the artist Amos Lemon Burkhart and to create a new conversation about creativity, mental illness, and addiction in order to help young artists stay alive and make art. So that's a picture from last year at Kutztown. We had a really fun event called the Creative Royale where um, kids just got to make freeform art for a couple hours, which is not something that college students get to do a lot of, believe it or not. And um, so everybody just got to hang out and make art. Uh, so this one is in combination with the exhibit that will be up at the Goggle Works all summer long of Amos's work that's called You Miss 90% of the Shots You Don't Take. And yes, that is a twist on the more common expression, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, which sounds like something that your you know, art teacher or coach or guidance counselor would tell you to like get out there and make every shot because you can't make a shot if you don't take it. Um, but typically Amos, he twisted it a little bit and it also suits him because he was such a lucky, lucky kid up until the end. And um, he like just things would happen to him all the time that sort of rewarded him unintentionally without him even trying. An example is he bought a pair of shorts at the thrift store one time for 50 cents and there was a $50 bill in the pocket. So that's an example of making a shot that you didn't even try for, um, I guess. So uh, anyway, that's that's the way I understand it is that sometimes life rewards you even accidentally somehow. Um, so, and that was the name of one of his pieces, uh, which is a really important piece among the works that he did and we picked it for the name of this show. It's going to be up at the Cohen Gallery if you've been there. It's the one on the second floor that has those slidey, slidey panels. So this obviously isn't his work, but that's where his work is going to be. Um, you've seen a lot of his work. He was very technically excellent about the age of 15 and then he got some more formal training when he was 16 and then by the time he was 17 he kind of invented this style called that he called zoetropes which was a lot of little pieces of animation on top of other images lots of images collaged together so these are further artworks by age 18 and 19 and um, one of the interesting things I think that very last piece which we call lemon eye there on the left is very like clear and kind of controlled compared to the chaotic uh, works that went right before it and that was when he was clean and sober and in treatment um, for about three or four months. Uh, this is just an, a view of what the last exhibition that we had of his work was up in Beverly, Massachusetts in the summer of 2019. This Goggle Works show is supposed to be last summer in 2020, but I think that you know what happened then. Anyway, um, so just showing a grouping of some of the pieces on the wall. So the thing we're excited about is we're going to also have this sort of scientific experiencing exhibit area at the same time as the show that's oriented to the teens that are going to be at the goggle works over the summer for teen camp probably middle school age and high school age kids and we have a couple things that mifflin is so i'm so grateful that you're going to be participating in one is with mr hole who teaches ap psych and the other is with mrs allen so the experiencing exhibit is going to be next door to the Cohen Gallery around the corner in the Studio 240, which is another kind of long, skinny, tall room. It is windows along one side and the empty wall along the other side. And we're going to have a variety of things in there, but those gray shapes on the right hand side, this is just like a rough visualization of part of what the installations can look like is the part that you're going to work on. 
Um, there's also going to be some kind of a interactive artificial intelligence computer uh, interactive piece that one of my professor friends at Kutztown is working on. Um, that's, I don't know, somehow you're going to be able to interact with your computer and the artwork on the wall, which will be interesting. We're also going to put in these little mechanical flip books that Gialisa has been working on that are uh, like animation um, flip books that you turn, crank a handle and the little animation flips by. So a, a bunch of different things to see and do. There's also going to be a library hangout area in there. We have some big fluffy bean bags and stools and ottomans to sit on and a bunch of books on a little bookshelf about creativity, mental illness, and addiction at all different levels with all different kinds of approaches and some brochures about services and such. Um, a nice rug to hang out on on the floor. And then on the other wall, not where your stuff is, there's going to be some research posters. Some of you might be in AP Psych and AP Art at the same time. And um, the research posters are gonna be about various topics, whatever the students pick that are in the areas, the realms of creativity, addiction, and mental illness to just share some information, just scientific information about these topics to try to alleviate some of the misunderstandings or myths or stigma about these issues and just shed some light on them from a scientific point of view. We're also going to have this question and answer wall with little uh, little areas that you can, there will be a, some common questions about these topics. And then my science team, I have uh, two doctors, Dr. Jonathan Harris, who's a cognitive neuroscientist, and Dr. Robin Nelson, who is a psychiatrist and MD, are both on our board, and they're going to provide some evidence-based answers to some common questions. Um, and those are going to be sort of interactive, too. Some of them are going to be just straight up answers and types. Some of them are going to be like things that you could write on, or, you know, they'll be able to interact a little bit with them. And um, also, Gialisa had the good idea to make those have QR codes on them so that people can interact with the answers and also, you know, maybe do some social media stuff with interacting with those questions. There's going to be a little area that's an affirmation wall. So you have to look in a mirror and give yourself some affirmations. <laughs> Uh, and another kind of survey area, we, we like the idea of collecting information from people and asking people to reflect about their own life and, and these issues. So the one, one wall is going to collect responses about how have these issues touched your life. And you can use a blue card if addiction has affected you, a yellow card if mental illness has affected you or someone you know, or a red card for creativity. So it'll just be interesting to see what the what the uh, visual data tells us on this wall of how have people been affected and by what. Uh, we also have a mind care kiosk on loan from the uh, Reading Hospital, which is a portable kiosk that lets you, you can f answer some questions and sort of do a self survey about mental health and um, it can answer some questions if you have anything about your own, you know, state it's a little screening tool and at the end it refers people to local service providers or services so it doesn't fix everything automatically unfortunately but it might give you some insight another thing that we um, have been looking at is four tools for mental health four things that can help um, make people stronger and protect uh, some protective factors against mental illness and addiction, uh, which are community mindfulness, emotional awareness, and gratitude. And so there'll be some tools there to, to engage people in those things. And then lastly, your part comes in, which I'm super excited about. So we wanted to combine this idea of art and science and sort of like surveying people and looking at what other people think, but in an artistic way. And um, there is Amos with his APR class in 2016. Um, and there's my wonderful Kutztown student, Joey Strain is in there and a bunch of other kids, really great class. Um, so he was where you are at your time. So we, uh, Gialisa had this great idea, I think, about stressors and strengths. So kind of the two things when you think about sort of your mental state in the world as a creative person or just a, any old person is there's things that are hard and there's things that make you stronger, right? So um, 
we see this as being a collaborative project. So all of your work is going to go together to form a, a bigger thing. What you're doing is a small part of a bigger piece. And we'll have two large grid, up, grid setups on the wall. One will say stresses and one will say strengths. And they'll both be just a co combination of the pieces that you're going to make. So. Um, and they'll be organized maybe based on color. Well, I'll show you what that means in a second. And by looking at them, a viewer will be able to get some insight as to maybe what's going on in, in the life of teenagers, of creative art-minded teenagers, and also sort of look at what which things are important. I'll explain it more. And also be able to look at the individual works of art and be inspired by them. So you're going to do two squares. Each person is going to get two of these little six inch panels. These are um, canvas wrapped panels. It feels like there's maybe masonite or illustration board in there. They're pretty stable. They're super flat. And that's just like your base. You can, uh, depending on what Mrs. Allen has prepared for you, you I don't know which media is you're going to be using, but in, if it's up to me, you can use any media you want. I'm thinking that there will be a, like a base coat of paint perhaps, and then you can kind of build on that. Um, so anyway, you're going to pick two things in your life. I have a little brainstorming question here um, and a, a handout for you. Something that is a stressor and something that is a support. So the stressor obviously is some things or people that stress you out, that grind your gears, get you worked up, keep you awake, bum you out, or drag you down. So right, things that are like things that are pulling you down. Support are things that are lifting you up. So something or someone in your life that lifts you up, helps you out, has your back, gets you motivated, makes you want to wake up, something to look forward to, something that excites you, or something that just makes you happy. So you're going to think of two of those, one stress or one support. You get a, you get a little panel for each one of those things. So first, I want you to think of the thing. And then we're going to categorize it in one of these seven categories. So the categories are self, family, friends, school, activities, work, and technology or media. We feel like these are pretty broad categories that are pertinent to the life of everyone, but maybe teenagers especially. And um, there are some examples of things that go into each category. So for example, if one of the things that stresses you out is maybe you have diabetes, well, that would be a self category because it's something within your person within yourself that is a stressor. Um, and if one of the things that supports you is the friends that you made in your lacrosse team, Mrs. Allen, um, then the, so the stressor would be from the self column, so it would be pink. The support would be from the activities column, your sports club, and that would be green. So depending on which thing you pick, You'll pick the thing first and then figure out which color it goes in. And Mrs. Allen can help diagnose which one of these things. And the category of technology and media, I kind of included things like the news, like if listening to like the news stresses you out, it goes in that category. If there's something about like world issues or world causes that stresses you out or support or lift, gives you hope, that could be in that column. Or maybe if it's if it's something that you really care about and you're working on, like you're enrolling voters or you're, you know, volunteering to clean up the creek or something, then that would be an activity. So there's some things that kind of could go in different columns and Mrs. Allen hopefully will help you pick the the best fit for what your issue is. Issue or support thing. Okay, so you're gonna make two things. One negative thing that drags you down one positive thing that lifts you up and we're going to figure out which category it goes in and that the reason we're doing that is because then when we put all these things together it's going to sort of end up as basically data visualization if all of the things that stress people out are purple from the media and all of the things that lift people up are yellow from family that will tell us something or if yellow if family stresses people out and media supports people, it'll be the other way around. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how the colors work out in terms of which things are working on which sides. I don't have any preconceived notion about what is what. And um, our idea is that hopefully as this exhibit travels around, this assignment basically will travel around when it's on 
show in the on exhibit in the goggle works will have some of the panels available and the students that are there for the teen camps can make a panel too they'll have some little velcro stickies on them eventually and we'll stick them up on a board and create our big montage so this page is just an example of once you've figured out what your stress stressor and support is which color each one of the things are maybe what you want to do is sort of coat the like I did, coat your panel with your appropriate color first and then kind of go from there. Um, and when we, as an art teacher, I, it's a good opportunity to bring in a little color theory. So if you are doing a single color focus piece of art, that's called monochromatic, meaning one color. And these are some examples from a Kutztown illustration class where each student got to pick either an angel or a demon in a red color palette or a blue color palette. So they used a single color of paint plus black or white. I think they were allowed to use like a little highlight of the other color. So basically what that gives you is when you have your main color, whichever color it is, is your background, then you can mix it with black to get shades of that color. You can mix it with, I mean, sorry, you can get mix it with, I'm wrong. you can mix it with black to get tones, gray to get shades, or white to get tints. Sorry, I copied and pasted. Um, and you can see how that works out. So then the other thing that you can do is you've, if you want to, once you've figured out what your image is going to be or transferred it on there, however you work, you can draw or use mark markers that are in that same color family. So if you have a red background and you have a shiny red marker, you can use that. You can use black or white as line on top of your color, um, a shade of your color. You can mix paint with one of those, you know, tints or shades, or you could even to a degree, like include some other colors. If you look at the piece in the bottom left there with the face, you can see it's predominantly red. So I sort of, if you kind of squint your eyes, it looks like a red picture. But if you look close, there's actually lots of colors in there. There's green, that's a piece of Amos's and there's green and red and blue and purple and all kinds of colors. But overall, the feeling is one color, primarily red. So that's what I would encourage you to do is try to stay as much monochromatic as you can. Just make sure that your piece, when you put it on the wall, it reads as yellow, red, blue, whatever your color is. Deal? Okay, so here's some examples. I think you can see how cool it's gonna be kind of when they're all combined. And as far as topic goes, you can draw or paint anything on your piece. So it can be realistic, it can be completely abstract, it can be anywhere in between. It can be a recognizable scene or it could be a symbol that only you understand. So again, if my um, thing that stresses me out is, you know, my, um, uh, I can't even think of something. If my <laughs> my students, okay, I'm a teacher. If my students are stressing me out, maybe I don't want to paint a portrait of every single student. Maybe I, you know, I could symbolize that somehow, or I could paint a collection of faces, or I could paint the way that it looks when they turn in their assignments. I don't know. I'm just blue brainstorming right in front of you, but you can interpret your subject any way you want. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can see from these samples, some of them are completely abstract. It could just be the feeling. It could be the feeling of stress and the feeling of joy. And, or it could be the, you know, it could be your pet that gives you hope and lifts you up. And, or my pet is kind of annoying right now. She's getting old. So maybe she's the thing that stresses me out. So you know, or it could be a person, or it could be a feeling, or it could be a place, or it could be an idea. It's it's completely up to you. Uh, the other thing I would encourage, if you want to, is you can do collage. So um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the kind of collages that are like, I'm sorry, but like high school journal collages, where it's just like all the words from the, you know, teenage magazine. But I do like collages that use bits and pieces of elements to build up an image. So if you look at the, there's a monochromatic yellow collage in this example that has just yellow stuff that the person found. There's also one that's got some embroidery and some uh, fabric elements on it. So it can be multimedia is what I'm saying. You can have, it can be dimensional. It can have things glued on it it, you know, wide open. Again, the only thing I really want to make sure of is that it has the color of the category. So when people are looking at the wall, they'll get, wow, that wall is really green or really blue or really, whatever 
most people pick, okay? And there is no right or wrong answer. I just want to, whatever you do is fine. And I recognize there's more than one stress in your life and more than one source of joy. So pick the one that's really comes to mind first, maybe. All right. And then when you're all done, like I have here, I'm giving Mrs. Allen a whole bunch of these little sticker labels that ask for your first name, your last name, your school, because there might be people from other schools doing this, your art teacher, just indicate on here, make sure you tell me which side does this go on? Is it a stressful thing or is it a support thing? Because we're going to sort them out and hang them up on the wall with a label, stressors and support. So I need to know which category your thing fits in. Um, also, let me know if you want it back. If you're willing to just let it go and let it travel with the exhibit, we're going to keep collecting these across the country. But if you really, really, really love it and you want it back, I will make sure it gets back to Mrs. Allen, which is why I asked for her name on there too. And also, if you put your email on there, I will know I'll be able to collect a list and tell Mrs. Allen these are the people that, or I could even email you, these are the people that need their stuff back. If there's something else that you want to say, like you have a comment or you have a title or, you know, whatever, another message, you can put it on there and it will stay with your piece always and forever so we can't lose them. Um, so, yeah, and I don't know there. For all I know, there might be a some media about the show or somebody that wants to, you know, the, your picture of your piece might end up in something and we would probably want to give you credit. So that's another reason we want your name on the back is in case you want to get credit for it. Um, and again, either way is fine. We can take them with us or you can have them back. Just just let me know either way is fine. So I think that's it for now. I'm sure that Mrs. Allen has more tips and techniques and tricks and we'll work with you to help you uh, figure out your image and I hope that you have fun and I hope that you enjoy doing this and I look forward to seeing you also I, we're going to have a special preview opening for Governor Mifflin students so sometime in the first week of June which I think is the last week of school there will be a, um, a private screening opening of the show that will be you there'll probably be food there there might be prizes so you and the AP Psych students will be invited to that. Okay, so thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited about it. And I'm so glad that Mrs. Allen was willing to do it. And I'm so grateful to Gia Lisa for coming up with a great idea. So thanks. Bye.